get paid, lil' shorty get paid Hundred thousand in the safe, couple thousand in the drain In the drain, get paid, lil' shorty get paid No, I'm always on my grind, 24 for 7 days here at Highland Mountain Bike Park. This is Ryan, AKA Live Free and Shred. We're up here just checking out the 2021 Trek Slash. We're riding what, the 9.8? 9.8 XT. XT builds. So I'm coming off of a 2020 Specialized Enduro. He's coming off of a 2020 Specialized Stump Jumper Evo. Um, bike I had before was the SB150. You've probably seen my review on the Enduro versus the SB150. Um, this will kind of be a review of just the Trek Slash itself, more of an initial impression. So we'll give you some runs. We'll give you some uh, talk through on the uh, on trails that we're familiar with. But we'll also do, I'll go over the uh, differences and stuff like that between my bike now, the Enduro, and this bike in the parking lot. And also just go over the geometry and stuff like that. All right, we'll see you out there. All right. 2021 Trek Slash. Feels pretty good so far. Ew. Oh, never done that one. Pretty good. Take it down any style. So far, I'm pretty impressed with this compared to my Enduro. Feels lighter. Get Ryan coming off that. Nice. Did some jumps, and drop in some tech. I just got really aggressive with the cat, but just about to do it. Tracks well. Yo! That was loose. Can't really tell the difference between my Enduro and this yet, because my Enduro I'm running an X2. This one's got the Super Deluxe on it. But, wow. So far, it feels really good. Yeah, let's do uh, Bone Saw to Hellion. Let's uh, push these bikes. Let's see what they'll do. See how they feel on the jumps, drop, big drops. Whoa, Whoa that was poppy. Feels pretty plush, dude. Aww. Feels it's pretty good. I mean, we ride this trail pretty much pretty often, but man, it just feels really good. This is <laughs> sick bike. This Dude, is I can't bike. believe like how good this thing just handles. Like it, right out of the box. Like, so what, four minutes on the last run. And then two minutes on this run. Yeah. I did that better than I do it on my Evo. Right out of the box, this thing just feels really good on the jumps. Yeah, right out of the box. This bike's ready for the park. Jumps good. Feels really good. Say it, but 
I think this thing's more fun than my enduro. Woo! I didn't think I would say that today, but so far, I think it is. Yeah, definitely bottom that rim out. I'm running 30 PSI in this thing right now. But I feel like it would be okay if uh, I had an insert in the rear or something. Get some flow on. Sending. Get some really good cornering going. This trail is really good for that. Oh, nice. I'll probably change those right off the bat. I'm a Victoria fan, so that's the way I run. You can check out the uh, link to the new Mazda tire. Put a link up in the description or up there too. Whew. I would not like this bike over my enduro but I have to say pretty impressed I know I've said that a thousand times already but it's poppy sense see that try that active braking Man, I'm just really not good at talking and riding at the same time. I don't know if I'm used to the 2.6 tire in the front either. I don't really like big tires. They feel kind of washy to me. So I'd probably change it out to a 2.4 traditional, like an enduro casing something like that but man this thing's pretty composed I would like to try it with a high volume shock maybe like an X2 or something like that but that's what I'm used to running on my enduro it feels pretty bottomless but I think it's maybe just because it doesn't have an insert in the tire I'm used to running that He's even running my enduro. I uh, put a tube in one day and then one run down a normal run and I uh, bought him to the rim like three times. So, two more, skip the last. Trying to get all the content we can for you. You guys on this review Woo! Ha! Went way too deep on the drop. Not bad for a rental, eh? Way too deep. I actually slapped the freaking stanchions on this fork. Did you? Slapped them. which is like an 18 and a half inch frame. And it feels exactly the same with like a 33, I think it comes stock stem. 
as my S3 Enduro. And one interesting fact is, you know, you've got the high and low position right here just by flipping this chip. Um, the high on this is 64.6, the low is 64.1 for a head angle, which is pretty good. The bottom, dra bottom bracket drops about 7 millimeters, which is kind of the same as the Enduro, but this bottom bracket in low is the same exact height as the Enduro in high. So that would give me more confidence to run this in low and have a 64.1 degree head angle and I want to say it's 346 millimeter bottom bracket height. Um, because I ran the Enduro in low and it was just, I was pedal smashing all over the place even with 170 the storage solution is pretty slick, just like the Specialized has the swap box. This has a different setup. Instead of like little clips on the side, it's got this little lever, you know, and that part's pretty sweet. Uh, another thing, key note, the uh, stock hub on this is the uh, Bontrager hub, but it's got the 108 points of engagement stock. Um, which is pretty impressive, you know. Most most brands stock wheel sets they'll give you like 36, you know, POE points of engagement, something like that. But this comes stock right out of the box, 108 points of engagement, which is pretty impressive. Another cool thing is the axle, you know, it's not. It's got this little tool you can pull out, and it's got your five millimeter Allen right on the end. I don't know if it's magnetic or what, but it kind of snaps in there and stays put. I mean, all the riding that we did today, it stayed put, but I don't know if I would trust that all the time. The knock block, eh, I don't know. Like it, not like it, so I don't know. I guess you can run it without it now with the 2021 versus the 2020 you had to run it. Now you don't, you can take it off, run a traditional headset and be able to, you know, do whatever. But it does keep you from smashing your, you know, if you've got controls and you get your bars, and your stem slammed down to the top tube. Um, it keeps you from over rotating in a crash or something like that, which is a benefit. So I'd probably just leave it. Can't think of much that I would want to change on this bike, which I'm really surprised to say that because, uh, you know, I'm usually like custom build from the ground up. Um, and you can see my other video, my specialized Enduro dream build. Um, I'll put that in the link description below. But um, usually I do everything custom, but. You know, I'm pretty impressed with this the way it is. All right, so final thoughts. 2021 Trek Slash XT build is what we rode, the carbon version. Um, you rode a medium, I rode a medium large. So it's a 17 and a half and an 18 and a half inch frame. You're running a Stump Jumper Evo um, with the Cascade Link and a coil. Yeah, I'm almost at 160. Millimeters of travel already. I'm running the Enduro that you see here right now. Oh, Vanna White it for you. <laughs> S Works Zooted Build. First off, what do you think about the fit of the medium large compared to this S? The 18 and a half inch track feels exactly the same as an S3 with a 40 millimeter step, okay. like cockpit wise. So the medium. What is it 17 and a half? 17 and a so half. So 17 track. and a half yep. track feels longer in the front center. So like bottom bracket to the fork. And then it feels shorter in the back end. It feels like a bigger bike overall, but it feels like it's bigger in the reach number and the chainstay is shorter. Right, because the chainstay numbers on the slash are 435, right? I think. I think it's 435 millimeter on the chainstays. My Enduro is 446. And I think my Evo or 442. is 447. I think I'm we're I think we're in the same ballpark. Yeah, I think it's like seven millimeters shorter on the Trek slash. So at linkage, the bottom of Hellion, I went to do a manual and I immediately noticed it was much easier to pull up into a manual on the slash than it is on my Evo. So did I versus the Enduro. It may be due to the coil. I'm not I'm great at I'm not great at manual. I'm not claiming to be great either, but, but like I definitely noticed it was way easier to get the front up 
versus this enduro and i don't know if that's necessarily just because of the chain stays it's probably a combination of the two combination between the linkage and shock which leads to the next thing that i kind of have a little bit of a gripe with the, the shock. shock the super deluxe i think it's tuning yeah i was uh i liked it a lot maybe it's the but i'm so used to the x2 and same here i'm used to the coil so i don't know i'm used to the coil and the cascade link so it's super plush off the top right like it didn't feel like it wanted to track and I think, straight. and I think that's because it's maybe not a high volume shock like an X2 or a coil. Also, the tire casing is a little lighter than we're tire used casing, to. Tire casing, no, no insert. insert. Higher tire pressure, I think, is what I was running. And I think it could probably do with some bigger volume spacers and maybe drop the pressure in the shock for me. Yeah, for me, it would be I need tire inserts for sure because I dinged the rim three or four times today. Not hard. And then, like you said, I feel like park-wise, the Super Deluxe is set up awesome. Oh, it's so, Such, it's so, so plush pop off like, you know, stuff like that. I but felt I, like I was going high. Oh, you went, you sky, <laughs> like following you off some of the, even the first tabletop on Hellion, you were like 10 feet in the air. So it just has unbelievable pop for jumping. I think that's the nature of an air shock anyways. I haven't ridden an air shock well, for a couple not, of years necessarily. now. Well, not necessarily, like it depends. Like that shock, maybe, because the X2, the way I have this tune, it doesn't pop that high. You know, even with turning the uh, low speed rebound up. I, I could be guilty for like going for like a dead feeling rear just because I'm used to the same like motocross. Yeah, I want the, the back to just stick and be planted and I'll I'll do the popping. I'll, I'll, that's my riding style is I'll pop. But yeah. this bike was like anything you want to pop off of. Oh, it, go for it yeah I, I actually honestly like i felt more confident and this is pretty uh i don't know i guess it's kind of like a compliment to it because i feel i felt more confident on that out of the box on the jump trails than i do with this the enduro that i've been riding for six months you know what i mean it was weird i could send it deeper with less effort and it felt like less speed than on any of the bikes I've ridden for the past couple of years. Yeah. I would be curious what it would be like with a magnetic can on it or some sort of volume spacer, like changing the volume bands or some tuning with that one instead of just ripping it off and just putting something else on it. Yeah. I know the Super Deluxe is a good shock. Can you do mods to the Super Deluxe? Oh, for sure. Okay. Drivetrain, great. X, I was impressed. I've been running X01 for years, and the XT really impressed. I love it. Dropper was good. Yeah. Didn't really like the lever a ton. Yeah. Didn't. I, I usually like to mount my lever on its own, yep. just so I can get the angle and everything. Geometry was dialed. I was. I felt totally. Do you know how they came stock? Are they in the high setting or low setting? I didn't even look. I didn't even. I didn't either. I'll, if I was gonna venture a guess. Maybe. I can, I'll go look out I think out its there. stock is high. I would say it's high. Yeah. I have another negative. Uh-oh. The fork. The Zeb? The damper and that Zeb. It was a select plus. So it's only, I think it's low speed compression. Gotcha. I felt like it needed more high speed compression. Like hitting big square rocks. Like ODB, ODC. I felt like I was getting knocked offline. Yeah. I mean, for me it was, I'm not a rock shock guy for forks. I'm used to, because I like to be able to just put a Fox 36 factory RC2 on my bike, not have to touch a thing. I'm 150 pounds, ride aggressively. I use almost all the travel all the time, but it's good. it just seems like it has that ramp up. I don't have to put any volume spacers in. The Zeb stock, I would have to put a volume spacer. I feel like we're ripping this $8,000 bike apart. It's not eight, it's an XT, so it's like, what, six? Still. Retail? Still. We're not ripping it apart. I mean felt really good out of the box but we ride really aggressively when we're racing and, and we did some runs today that we were like race runs. yeah so i'm not used to it either so 2.6 was too much tire for me yeah i'm not i'm not in the plus tire crowd overall i'm very impressed with the new slash the geometry is good i think it's a really good starting point i think if you're not like joe racer guy I think it's a great bike to ride at the park, riding your trails. It pedals really well. If you had to have one bike, you can do everything on this. 
it might be a little bit cumbersome if you're like trying to XC ride it, but great bike. No, I agree. I, I was actually really impressed with it. And I, I wasn't I expecting see, to be this impressed. I wasn't either. <clears throat> so, and I would say like, if I was going, you know, for a new bike, like I would not have any problems running it. I would probably just take some things from the stock build and I would change it for racing. But yeah, I agree. It's an awesome bike. So much fun. I'll probably buy one. Same. <laughs>